Halo Infinite was easily my most anticipated game of 2021. A return to form for the Halo series after the lackluster reception that 4 and 5 got. Halo Infinite's initial trailer had me hyped beyond belief, and of course, getting hyped for a game that you know next to nothing about isn't always good because your expectations are so high and it can easily fall flat. In a lot of ways, Halo Infinite has held up to my expectations. There are so many great things about the game that I absolutely love, and I am having a ton of fun with the actual gameplay itself. But there's a lot of things that this launch left me wanting. I love Halo Infinite, but Halo Infinite's launch was severely disappointing. In this video, I'm not going to be discussing any major spoilers for the campaign. I will briefly touch on a couple topics, but if you haven't beaten the campaign, I'm not going to spoil anything major for you. So, Halo Infinite's gameplay is damn near perfect. It's almost everything I've wanted out of a recent Halo game. Most of the guns feel really good. The gameplay is amazing. The advanced movement that comes with the grappling hook or the repulsor is great. I think it's a much better way of implementing it than Halo 5 did. The sandbox is great. The maps are pretty damn good, too. There's not really a map that I hate. We're going to start off with the campaign, the thing that most people would end up buying a Halo game for. Now, of course, I myself have Game Pass Ultimate, so I didn't have to pay for campaign, but I would have gladly spent $60 on this campaign. I think the story was great, though there was a few too many hologram cutscene moments that I think could have been implemented a little bit better to move the story along. But I think the story was really good. Again, I'm not getting into spoilers, but it was a lot easier to follow than, say, Halo 5, and I was more invested in it than I was with Halo 4 or 5. Halo Infinite's story picks off after 5, but you didn't necessarily need to play 5 in order to understand Halo Infinite. Of course, it's going to be a lot better if you have played all the Halo games. You'll understand more of what's going on, but this is more of like a soft reboot of the series. But overall, I really did enjoy the story. A lot of the cutscenes that they actually had were great. Like I said, a little bit too many hologram exposition moments, but I think the maps or the story missions themselves were really well designed. I did enjoy them. It just felt super Halo to me, as opposed to Halo 5, which just, it felt off to me, but Halo Infinite, art direction-wise, aesthetically, looks and feels and plays like a Halo game. I love that. The gameplay in itself of the campaign, as well as the multiplayer, is really damn good. The grapple shot ability is amazing. It makes maneuvering around the open world a lot more enjoyable. I hardly ever used a vehicle. I mostly just used my grappling hook, especially when I got it upgraded all the way. So that was definitely a great addition to it. In terms of Halo Infinite's campaign being open world, while yes, it is a quasi open world, most of the story missions are pretty linear. Go to this spot, do this thing, and you're kind of in an enclosed thing, except for the one where you gotta like destroy some AA guns. That's a little more, you kind of choose where you go, similar to other Halo games. So the open world there wasn't a huge issue for me. It could have been open world, which it is, and I don't mind that, but it also could have been like all the other Halo games where it's a linear, here's mission 1, 2, 3, 4, and I also would not have had an issue with that. So the open world in and of itself is not bad. There's a decent amount of things to do there, but it falls into the same pitfalls as a lot of open worlds where there's just going to be a lot of dull moments where you're just kind of running around from spot to spot if you don't utilize fast travel, and there's just not always something going on. So the open world was there. It was enjoyable to me, especially if you're a collectible hunter. There's definitely a lot to do there. Uh, it's not going to be for everybody. I didn't hate it, but it also wasn't the greatest thing Halo's ever done. With the campaign, there is the lack of co-op leading to this kind of disappointing launch. Campaign co-op has been a staple in Halo since the very beginning, and the fact that we are missing that, you can't do a lasso run with your buddies, is very disappointing. Missing campaign co-op is very disappointing. Obviously, I'm not a game developer, I don't understand how all these things work, but just not having campaign co-op is severely disappointing. Whether it be local or online, it's just a staple of the Halo franchise, and the fact that it's not there, again, leading to the disappointing launch. In terms of performance of the game, I haven't had any major issues. It seems to run at a constant 60 FPS. Uh, I do have a Series X. I feel like they could have utilized the power of the Series X a little bit more. There was definitely a few times where I was sitting in the Wasp, driving around and flying around in the open world, and I was seeing trees clip in and out of existence. 
pretty sure the console in and of itself is more than capable of handling that, but maybe that's just because they had to also optimize this for previous gen consoles, but regardless. I think the game is very well optimized, but there were a few little visual bugs that didn't really take me out of the game, but I have to mention it here. There is no replayable missions in campaign. So if you're going through and getting all the collectibles or you want to get all the skulls, anything of that nature, there's no way to just select what mission you want to play from the campaign. You literally have to start a new run and get it all through in the mission as you're on it. You cannot backtrack to a lot of these mission locations. So once you're done with the mission, you can't go and replay it without starting a brand new campaign. Again, a thing that every other Halo game has had, why doesn't this one have it? 343 has been pretty vocal, like, hey, we're listening, we're working on it, but why is that a thing that's already not there to begin with? Another disappointing thing about the campaign is the unlocks you get. There's these little armor caches that you can find around the map that'll give you some things for multiplayer, and this is literally just skins. You get armor coatings, weapon skins, and emblems. There's no special piece of armor for beating the game on any difficulty, beating the game legendary, beating the game lasso, nothing. You're getting a few armor coatings, which are, a couple of them are good, uh, most of them I don't really use, but some of the other Halo games, you beat it on legendary, you beat it on lasso, you got a special unlock. There's none of that for the campaign here. So those campaign unlocks that you got from other games aren't here. Another disappointing thing that's missing here. Moving on to the multiplayer aspect of Halo Infinite, the thing people are probably going to spend the most time with. The annoying part was, at least at launch, no playlist selection. You can select quick play, big team, or ranked. There's no way to go, hey, I just want to play Slayer, I just want to play CTF. None of that, and even that is still kind of lackluster here, a couple uh, months down the line. You still can't select specifically which game mode you want in every single avenue. Of course, you can pick SWAT, you can pick Slayer, Ranked, Big Team, but you can't select, hey, I only want to play CTF right now. So there is more options for playlists now, but it's still not what it was in all the other Halo games. Look at Master Chief Collection. You have six, five or six different Halo games in one thing and they can manage playlist selection there. I don't think it has to do anything with player base. I just feel like it should be in the game. Halo Infinite's multiplayer just has a lack of maps overall. Now, all the maps that are in the game, I really enjoy. There is no map in Halo Infinite that I absolutely despise. I just think there should be more maps. We haven't gotten a specific roadmap saying, hey, we're getting these new maps then. We're getting, you know, this kind of adjustment at this point in time. We don't have a roadmap. I know Sketch over on Twitter uh, did mention that they will be releasing a roadmap. But we don't have it yet, and that's kind of annoying. We just need a little bit more content, otherwise people are going to get really bored really quickly because when you don't have enough, it gets stale pretty quick. Another annoying thing about Halo Infinite's multiplayer is that lack of unlockable items slash the monetization. Now, with it being free to play, I totally expected an in-game shop, much like all other games have nowadays. I mean, hell, even Halo 5 had loot boxes, so I'd say the system we have in Infinite is much better than Halo 5. But... The lack of unlockable items is kind of annoying. Here's how you unlock things. Either do all the weekly challenges, level up in the battle pass. From gameplay in and of itself, aside from the battle pass or weekly challenges, there is no unlock for you to get. Halo 4 had a really good system. These challenges netted you these options for unlocks. Like, why don't we have that in Infinite? Why is there no milestones to complete to unlock certain armor? It's just so frustrating when so many other Halo games had go this route and you can get this item hey you do all these achievements get recon hey you beat the game on legendary here's hayabusa or here's the katana i don't remember exactly how you got it but the fact that we don't have any other ways of unlocking items aside from a weekly challenge in the battle pass is so annoying and in terms of those unlockable items there's absolutely no cross core customization as of right now, there are three cores for the Spartan armor, and you can't mix and match what you've unlocked for one with another. If I wanted to use a Meal's Helmet on the first armor core that you have, you can't do that. The shadings are specific to that armor core. The unlocks are specific to that armor core. I don't know why we don't have cross-core customization. It's very annoying when you get a helmet, but you can only use it in this one specific scenario. 
I love Halo's customization. A lot of the options we have here in Infinite are really cool. It's just the fact that they are blockading you from doing certain combinations that's really annoying. Back on the missing features thing, there's no Forge. Forge and the co-op campaign have been delayed, I think it's about six months. So six months after December, congrats, you can play co-op campaign and you can play Forge, but how many people are going to stick around for that? Halo 5 left out Forge for a while too, and of course, Halo 5 had a really good Forge from my understanding. I myself am not a Forge player, but it, the fact that it's not here on launch when we had it in previous Halo games is super disappointing. Again, I myself am not a Forge user, but I do like playing a lot of those custom modes, those custom maps that people did in Forge, and you can't do that now. You can't do that for six months. They're just missing so much. There's no infection. There's a lack of game modes here. There's no race, rocket race, shoddy snipers, infection, uh, king of the hill. None of that's here. They were missing so many modes. Of course, they're going to add these down the line, but why, why not have a bunch of this at launch? Because... There's just a lack of content here, which is the huge problem with Halo Infinite. A lack of content. The gameplay in and of itself, a ton of fun. The most fun I've had with Halo in years. There's just a lack of the content, and that's what's going to drive people away. People are going to get bored. The last thing that's kind of disappointing here is the weapon balancing. Now, most of the weapons are really good. There's three I have a problem with. The Ravenger, Plasma Pistol, Commando. The Commando feels like it shoots marshmallows, like its recoil's kind of weird, but with its slow fire rate and its low damage, it takes a lot to kill people if you don't hit them in the head. I think it's something like six body shots after their shields are gone to actually kill them with the Commando, which obviously means, hey, you want to hit them in the head, but I have an issue utilizing the Commando. Like, I just don't understand its recoil pattern, and maybe that's a personal problem, but... I don't think the Commando's a good gun at all. I know it was a bit overpowered in the flights, and I'm no game developer, so I can't tell you exactly what I would do to buff it, but I definitely think it needs a rework. The Plasma Pistol is literally only good for knocking down an enemy shield, and at that point, you might as well use the Disruptor or the Dynamo Grenades, because those actually have a little bit more utility. The Disruptor and Dynamo Grenades can disable vehicles, something the Plasma Pistol has done in nearly every other Halo game. I don't know why they took that out of Halo Infinite, because that's basically the one reason I would ever have a plasma pistol, is to really destroy shields and incapacitate a vehicle. I have no reason to grab a plasma pistol unless I also have a battle rifle. I'm not picking up a plasma pistol in almost any scenario. And the last weapon that I don't understand is the Ravenger. Aside from its alt-fire method, the thing's useless. Like, if you're not charging it up to shoot the shot and leave the AoE effect on the ground, good luck getting a kill. Like, I do not understand how to use the Ravenger. It's just very baffling to me that some of these weapons were overpowered in the flights, and now they're just completely dead on launch. Like, it's such a weird scenario to be in. Overall, I really enjoy Halo Infinite. A lot of what we have here is super good. The gameplay in and of itself, it's very good. It's probably my favorite Halo experience I've had in terms of gameplay. The customization is really good aside from those roadblocks we have. And there's just a ton of missing content in Halo Infinite. 343 has obviously been pretty vocal in listening to the community, but there's still a lot of work they need to do there. There is a lot of changes that need to come to Halo Infinite, otherwise people are just going to keep getting mad. People are already pissed off about the store, the in-game store, which I haven't bought too much in. I've spent maybe a total of 30 bucks total in Halo Infinite. I think the in-store prices are a bit inflated. Most games with in-store items are about that same cost. I think knock them in half, and I'd probably purchase a little bit more, but I'm not paying $10 for a weapon, camo, and an emblem. I'd pay 5 maybe, but give us some more options for unlocking things, cut those store prices down a bit, and just give us that content we've been dying for. Halo Infinite's on its way to be the best Halo game ever. There's just so many things that 343 has fumbled that are just adding up and making Halo Infinite's launch pretty disappointing and lackluster. Let me know what you guys think about Halo Infinite's launch down below. How do you feel about the game? Are you enjoying it? Personally, I love it. It's just that those little things keep adding up. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Thank you guys for sticking around and watching this video. I'll see you guys in the next one. Cheerio, mates.